All right, now we can start weaving. Excellent. Let's start by taking this into the up shed and grab one of your warp separators and just feed it through that open shed. This is going to help with the tension of the piece. And then into the down shed and another warp separator. Now, if you don't have these warp separators, you can skip this step and just weave the header instead. It'll still work out fine. Just push those down together. Back to the up shed. Now grab your waist yarn. The waist yarn should be the same weight or the same ply, width, whatever you want to call it, thickness as your warp yarn because this is, we're setting up for a balanced weave here and we want to even out these gaps because they're made by um, tying into the groups and if we start with a header of waist yarn that's the same ply, same thickness it will even out those gaps for us so we're in the down shed now back to the up and we're just alternating up and down at the moment. You can see those gaps start to even out at the end of the piece the header gets pulled out it's not actually part of the weaving. Some people also weave headers to keep their ends secure if they're not hem stitching on the loom. So they'll weave a header at each end for that purpose. We're not going to be hem stitching on the loom. I found when I made my bag that I it wasn't necessary, I didn't need to do that. We're going to secure the ends very soon after taking them off the loom, so there was very minimal um, unraveling. Alright, so back to the up shed. I've done one, two, three, four, five, six picks of waist yarn, and as you can see, that's looking pretty good. So we'll just cut that and leave it. And now we can take our weft yarn and see what our piece is going to look like. We'll start by coming in the up shed. Leave a tail hanging off the end and beat that. And then the down shed. So we, we're doing plain weave for this entire project. And that's one of the reasons that um, I'm using a variegated yarn. I dyed this yarn in sort of long repeats. Um, the prototype tote bag that you would have seen already uh, the yarn was in shorter colour repeats, so you get a real mishmash of colour and it's, you know, it's a quite a busy piece. And this time I wanted to do longer colour repeats to get, so that the colours stand out a bit more, you can see each colour. And you also get really interesting patterning when you have repeats of colour. So even though you're doing a plain weave, it really doesn't look plain because of all the colour that's happening. Um, I don't know if you can see here, just here already, it looks like I've woven little flowers, but I've just been weaving, weaving plain weave and it's, it's just the way the colours have repeated. So that's really cool and that's why I recommend using a variegated weave to make a uh, variegated yarn to make your bag look really interesting. I mean, plain weave is beautiful on its own with a solid colour, but for something like a bag, you know, it's a bit of a feature piece. Um, I just think this is really nice. So I'm going to keep weaving along and you do the same. And when I come to advancing the warp, so when, when I've woven up to up a bit further to the heddle, closer to the heddle, um, 
I'll come back and show you advancing the warp if you don't know how to do that already. And I'll also talk a little bit about options for measuring the piece. I've woven three inches so far, so I'm going to advance the warp, but before I do, I'm going to grab a pin. If you've got a T-pin, it's better than an ordinary pin, but uh, a dressmaker's pin will do as long as it's got some sort of a head on it. And I'm going to just weave that into the last place where I've finished weaving before I advance the warp. That's one way that I can keep track and I've written down in my notebook three inches so I know that I've done three inches. Um, there are other ways of measuring. Some people will measure out a piece of yarn or string the length of the project and incorporate that on the side as part of their warp so that they can just follow the string as they go along. Um, another thing is to do what I was doing there and to actually incorporate a tape measure if you've got a tape measure that's maybe not as stiff as this one um, so that you can just have the tape measure there as you're weaving along. I'm doing the pin method. So to advance your warp we go into neutral position. We reach to the back and let go of the cog and wheel a little way so that this goes a bit slack and then we wind from the front towards us okay I'm going to go a little bit further than that and as we're winding once your work starts to go around the bar you can start inserting warp separators again. I'm not going to do that yet because it hasn't traveled far enough. Now uh, when I was at the craft shop the other day they were selling this eyelash yarn pretty cheap you know these novelty sort of yarns people like to knit scarves and things with them and I thought oh, I'll grab that I don't know what I'm going to use it for but I'll grab it anyway and now that I'm looking at this I'm thinking Every three inches or so, I'd like to run just one pick of the eyelash yarn and see how that looks. So I was in the upshed, that's where I'm up to. So I'm going to put one pick of that through. And gently beat it. So it's just an added little interest there. And then because I'm only running one pick, I'm going to cut it on the other side. Don't worry about what your edges are looking like. If they're looking scrappy like this, because, because we're making a bag, those edges are going to be sewn in anyway. Nobody's going to see them. It's not like if you're making a scarf or something and you need your edges to look really good. So after that, I'm going to keep weaving for another three inches then I'm going to do another pick of the eyelash yarn. Now I'm not in any way saying that you have to do something like this. I'm just showing you how, you know, as you're weaving along, sometimes you might just think of something you've got in your stash or you might think of something different that you want to do just to make extra interest. And you could, for example, put in a piece of ribbon or, um, a piece of sparkly yarn or anything like that and then um, I'm just going to keep weaving so yes I will check in with you in a little while and update my progress again um, by the way I want to see your pictures of your weaving on the loom so if you are joined up with the Facebook group please take the time to upload a photo and show us what your weaving is looking like, what yarn you're using and how it's all going. Definitely stop in if you need help or advice. That's what it's there for. So I hope to see you all there.